This show is brought to you by listeners like you. Support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. I'm hungry, smart, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, a set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Beat up for the taste of the We're in the south side in a sort of training facility. Probably familiar if uh, those have trained wrestling and everything. We're here with director Patrick Jordan of, let me get this right, the elaborate entrance of Chad Deity, which is going to be uh, performing at the Ace Hotel here in Pittsburgh very soon. Uh, and uh, Patrick joins us. How you doing? Uh, nice to be here. How are you? All right. So, got stock questions that we do for this show. Please First do. of all, what's your earliest member? Um, <clears throat> what's your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Oh man. Well, it would have to be you know Saturday mornings WWF, basically waking up to watch the wrestling with my father. Yeah, That's so awesome. that, that was that was about it. Yeah. Anybody any, any particular any era that that really well, sticks I mean, out to yeah, you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it would the 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 golden era, depending on who you talk to, that early '80s kind of the the birth of WrestleMania when they mm -hmm. brought Mr. T in, and I was actually a fan of Roddy Piper at the time, <laughs> so I kind of always kind of had a affinity for the heel, but um, yeah, so that that would have been it, like that whole thing. I mean, seeing that, I mean, my Bruno San Martino actually used to jog at a track that my father did. My father would jog on the track. Bruno would jog in the dirt around it like the mountain of it mm -hmm. and I remember this one time I chased him down I must have been like the first or second grade and I was like you know Mr. San Martino could you could you please uh, sign an autograph when you're done working out he was like sure kid uh, yeah sure <laughs> he never came back but I did I, I'm still waiting for that autograph Bruno there you go but, um, but yeah so that, 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 that would be the earliest memories of wrestling for me yeah that's awesome is this the first kind of project that you've worked with uh, around Pro wrestling? Yes, this is the first. And this is the only one that I know of. Um, uh, the theater company, we do kind of edgier plays. We've tackled different sports before. We've done a baseball play called Take Me Out. Um, our plays tend to have elaborate fight scenes. We sometimes we'll have a lot of blood, so we have that in common with some pro wrestling. I've never used a razor blade, but you know, we've we've done that kind of stuff before. Yeah. I, I think one of the more interesting things is like you know we're, we you know Mike Mike Kingston over at, at a, a Headlock the comic book. Mm -hmm. um, I've read that, those books and it's about a theater major that gets into pro wrestling because the theater aspects that that really appeal to him with it. Oh yeah, this, and, yeah. and it's interesting that you're a theater company doing a pro wrestling play. It's like it's come full circle. It is. It, it really is. I mean, pro wrestling and theater have more in common than anyone will admit on either side I'm sure but it's the same kind of a process there's there's a storyline mm -hmm. but you know you're on your own when you're out there when it's happening things happen it's live it's not like you're watching a movie right, right? So, right. so that could happen and I mean in this show in, in in Chad Deity I mean we have a couple of wrestling matches we have all that stuff happens so it's a little bit more you know vigorously scripted than a wrestling match would be but it's still live. You still have to get, you're trying to elicit a response from a crowd. There's a give and a take, that sort of stuff. So, so and, and like I said, we're in this, we're in, like I said, a very familiar setting, a, right. a, a ring sitting in a warehouse. Right, yeah. Uh, which, you know, I think a lot of people that we've talked to on this show are very familiar with this look, this feel. Like, it's, it's where a lot of them, it's you, a little you, warmer you in the winter than I think a lot of them are used to if you hear old, old Mick Foley, uh, Dominic Danucci stories, oh, yeah. right? Absolutely. Uh, but uh, so, 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 th so you guys, like, actually had to train to do a lot of this we stuff. We did, we did. Um, it took us a while to find the actual location to fit the wrestling ring. We had to mm -hmm. buy the wrestling ring. We're trying to get this to be as realistic yeah, as yeah, possible. Yeah, you can't really just kind of stick this on some small uh, practice stage. Well, we had so. a couple of places that we could use, but the, it's a 10-foot ceiling. Oh, and there's, there's, this would barely fit. And I've seen those indie shows where that happens. Oh, well, people hit their hand. I mean, no, no, they just the show, uh, the the ceiling's gone by the end. Well, I've seen, <laughs> I, I saw the one indie show where the kids at the show were just chanting, "Hit your head, hit your head." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's awesome. Yeah. So, then tell me a little bit more about that. Like, how much, how physical does this get? How, how did you guys prepare for this? Well, um, for the wrestling portion of this, uh, uh, Shane Douglas, the franchise, mm -hmm. actually, thank God he's local. And he was able to um, work with the guys. He still comes in periodically and checks on them. He kind of just showed the guys how to take the bumps and everything. We have one guy who has been a pro wrestler before. Um, so he's in there. The, the way the show is, it's brilliantly written. Um, it kind of encapsulates the entire experience, kind of what we already talked about, about how you started with wrestling, yeah. where you go through, and how you become a wrestler. So our, our main character is um, you know, the guy who is already in the ring when they come back from commercial, never gets the elaborate entrance, thus the title, mm. the elaborate entrance of Chad Deity. But um, yeah, uh, so we had Shane Douglas come in and Shane actually um, showed the guys, they took some bumps, they got a instant respect for wrestling when they started to get sore and they realized that just 
running into the ropes is a lot more painful if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> when we built the ring, actually, some of the guys that helped me build the ring, I was like, hey, guys, be really careful. And they just ran at the ropes. One guy bounced off the ropes, literally catapulted and face planted into the ring, like was just out. So, so you really could have used those sumo suits that were just We could have used those sumo suits. But, but the, fortunately, the guys in the show are athletic. We've got one pro wrestler, and he does a lot of the grunt work in the matches mm. he's the one that's like getting thrown around flying high just for context kind of i know i just randomly brought up sumo suits in the middle of a wrestling podcast but we were just filming for uh yeah jagos podcast uh both of us were guests on there and uh a lot of interesting visuals, so please go check out yajagoff.com uh, for all of that stuff because it got really interesting right but yeah it's true uh the uh but the the play it has um basically every little part of wrestling that you can imagine like mm -hmm. um there's promos in the play, there's direct-to-camera stuff, there's interaction with the audience, that kind of thing. So what was the question? I got a little sidetracked. No, no, this is good. Like, how are you preparing and everything? Oh, like how that? we're preparing? Yeah, well, we rehearse um, six days a week, mm -hmm. um, usually between five and eight hours, depending. And now with the wrestling element, you know, we train a couple hours before they go through all the moves. They basically go run the paces, kind of run the ropes a little bit and just to get warmed up, just so they don't, you know, screw up and get lost, because... It's not like a wrestling match. I mean, if I lose an actor, I'm, I'm screwed. Uh, but um, yeah, so we do that and then we get into the, the script work, the line work. I mean, it's a, one character has two or three page monologues. There's really no fourth wall in the show. Mm -hmm. So you know, you, you have an actor in the middle of a scene and he'll turn and he'll just start talking to the audience and making obscure wrestling references, like bringing up these things, the jokes about basically, there's a running joke about the camel clutch that goes on throughout the show. So just, this is great. Yeah. So there's there's a lot. If you're a wrestling fan, I think there's enough Easter eggs loaded in this script for you that you'll feel, you know, everybody more yeah. than anybody sitting next to you. And that's the thing. We do in theater. You're not just trying to attract the wrestling fans. You're oh, trying, yeah. like, it's, it's for the common person, too. You don't it have is. to be the biggest. Well, that's actually uh, the, my theater company's called Bare Bones Productions. And the plays that we do, we don't try. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with it, but we're not going to do Shakespeare. We're not going to try to do that. We, we do shows for people. So you're still gonna get the message, you're still gonna get the feeling. I basically tell people that the theater I do is for the people that I grew up with. You know I mean? I wanted, these are shows that I wanted to see. So when I was basically acting like I was Razor Ramon and you know, you know, putting the razor's edge on somebody when I was in elementary school or whatever, those guys would like come see this play and they would enjoy it. And that's, all of our plays have that kind of an edge to it if you look at the other plays we've done. That's awesome. So they're not like your, well, the slogan that I put on the website, that's still there, it's theater without the black turtleneck. Ooh. Good, because I don't and own one. TM. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. So uh, at this point, yeah. I usually ask, uh, uh, what are you watching? You, you, you sound like you're a pretty big wa wrestling fan. Like, what are you watching on, on, on TV? I actually um, fell through. I mean, my, my, I was big into it in the 80s. Then there was the dip. Then I came back in the 90s mm -hmm. with the whole NWO and the WCW and all that, yep. all that kind yep. of thing. Then I stuck with it for a while, and then I faded out. And now I kind of started watching. I still watch WWE. You know, I still mm -hmm. watch, I still watch that Ring of Honor mm -hmm. when it comes on. I'll, I'll watch that. I'm not as I'm kind of like my head's kind of up my up my ass enough to know. Show. There's yeah. plenty yeah. out yeah. there. There's, so. there's, there's yeah, a lot yeah. out there. And, you know, I also found that there's a ton of stuff local. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. lot of local wrestling or there's the KSWA and there's PWX. And then like, there's a lot of different guys. And, you know, we actually trained one day at the uh, PWX WrestlePlex in the Keysport. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So. Um, so uh, usually I ask, uh, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling? What's the best and worst thing about uh, working theater? Wow, man! The, we, <laughs> how, kind of, how long? How long can think, we go here? I think there's a lot of parallels there. So, and you can take it however oh, there, you there's want. There's a there's a ton of, of parallels. I mean, there's. Am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Well, there's the B, there's the BS that you're gonna get anywhere, right? You've got you know people in positions of power you got people with the money you have mm -hmm. to please all these people then you got to get people to come to the ring and you're never going to please everybody so that's that kind of thing yeah there's never going to be a match that everyone says oh yeah that's the match you yeah. know you're going to find something wrong with everything so um parallels to wrestling are, are huge because we are performing you know you are trying to get this message across so things that i love about theater is when it works when that hits and you can get that energy in the give and take, you can't get that in a movie. You can't get that on television. You, you, when you're in the room, you're breathing the same air. 
as uh, as the other people and if you could get somebody really pissed off if you can get somebody that's angry that's great if you can get somebody that like loves it they leap to their feet and they clap that's great if you move them or getting them thinking the play i mean everything right now with the with the climate with what's going on if you turn on the news every piece of art every wrestling match every piece of theater has a whole new meaning and you can look at it differently so this is kind of an interesting time to be producing something like this that's awesome yeah. where can people find out more about the show if they're catching us in advance or, or what you guys are doing for what what you're doing after this well um we uh you can to see the show you can go to barebonesproductions.com um you can catch us on twitter we're barebones at barebones one um, and we're on Instagram at Barebones One, and basically everything's Barebones One. And on Facebook, it's Barebones Productions. The show is January 26th to February 4th at the Ace Hotel uh, in East Liberty. It's awesome. It's an old gymnasium that's been untouched since like the 50s. So you've got the, the one with like the tracks around the top mm-hmm. and everything. So it's it's really cool. Uh, paints chipping off the walls, and it, it'll really get the vibe in there. And you said this play's been around for a while. A this bit play's been too, around so. since 2009, 2010. Yeah. Uh, it won the Obie Award in New York, and it was up for the Pulitzer Prize. Because there's more nice. to it than just you know banging heads. You will see some fun stuff. I mean, I think there's a there's a chair hit. There's uh, there's there's lots of. We got a lot of stuff going on in the show. There you You'd go. Be surprised. Um, go check it out. And if you're not here in Pittsburgh, you know we have kind of a worldwide audience here on this podcast. Uh, uh, see if this play, like, kind of get your Google alert on this and see if it coming to you, it's coming to your town or anywhere you may be visiting. It's definitely worth checking out. Oh, so. and, and up next for us, we're building a theater, a permanent space in Braddock. Nice. Yeah. So um, right, um, it's going to be connected to uh, Superior Motors Restaurant right across the street from the Edgar Thompson Steel Mill. So we'll be doing like three or four shows a year once that thing gets done. There you go. Probably go ch- this April, May. Go check it out. Uh, I think a few of us may- mayhemers are going to have to get down there and check it out. This is a lot of fun. So I mean, the, it's, the show is is good. It's right up our alley yeah. right here. So thank you, Patrick Jordan, director of the elaborate entrance of Chad Deity. Go check it out or find it in your town. Check out his stuff. Thank you, everybody. Please uh, support the show. Check out the rest of our interviews over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Support our friends over at IndieWrestling.us. And until next time, please support indie wrestling and independent theater. Oh, this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.